All right, good morning, CSP students. How are you doing today? It's Mr. Copperthite. I want to uh, walk you through a interactive Kahoot review um, for, this, uh, for this particular video. And I also want to kind of look at our study guide at the end as well and give you some definitions and some important words that will uh, help you prepare for the midterm that we'll be taking on Tuesday. So uh, let's go ahead and just uh, run a couple of things by. So I'm going to be running through all these questions. Uh, I have myself on uh, on my, my phone. I have my phone uh, just kind of playing through this while I record this. And uh, I also want to like encourage you to also uh, answer these questions and keep your own score and comment how many of the questions you got right at the end. Uh, and be honest, of course. All right, so let's take a look and play this, play along. Okay, so the first question that we're gonna have, if A equals midterm and you type type A in Python, what is the output? So which of these four choices would be output if you were to execute the type function on the variable A? Let's see, which one of those four would it be? A few seconds. And if you said str, you are correct. So that would be a string. Uh, anytime you have a sequence of characters that's in order, especially when you initialize it with quotations, that would be a uh, that would be a string. Otherwise, you would get something else out of that if you typed, for example, if it was equal to true, it would be a boolean. If it was five, it's integer, and if it was float, you would say like five point five. Okay. So, okay, let's go to the next question. To determine if two values are equal, which sign should you use? So specifically more like something along the lines of an if-then statement. So which of these four would you use? Comparing two values, determining if they're equal. So if you said, of course you may, you may have just caught on to the last few seconds, I went to click it with my mouse when I should have been clicking it with my phone. Uh, but that's what you get. You get the double equals. Double equals is what you would use to compare two values to see if they are equal and especially in use for an if-then statement. If you said equals, then that's actually an assignment operator. Remember, that's how we put values into variables. Okay, so let's go ahead to the next question. What's the program algorithmic structure that repeats instructions multiple times? So would it be a cycle, a window, a boolean, or a loop. So think back to your experiences in class in particular. Which of these would it be? So if you said loop, you are absolutely correct. Uh, any of those others could certainly mean specifically cycle, but in programming we use the term loop to describe that. Okay, let's do next question. The starting place for all files in a storage media, what do you call that? Is it the drive, the beginner, the root, or the directory? And if you said root, you are correct. The starting point, select so like the C drive, the A drive, well, maybe not the A drive, the F drive, the D drive, all those. P drive, right? Okay, starting point is the root. Next question. What's the third letter in HCI stand for? Is it inter information, excuse me, human, interaction, or interfacing? Now, if you don't remember this, that's okay, because in our main class we didn't quite get to this, but this is an easy question once you know what it stands for. So if you said interaction, you are correct. HCI basically is how humans interact with computers. So when you use things like controllers, mice, keyboards, those are all examples of things that envelop or use the principles of HCI. Next question. Code that works directly with data, such as images, is blank oriented. Is it image, object, data, or code? So if you said object, you are correct. Object oriented. Last few assignments that we did in the semester were about objects. Okay, next question. 
What's the term that describes an unintentional error in a program? Hopefully you'll know this one. Even before you took this class, you probably knew the answer to this question. Maybe you didn't quite realize it. So if you said bug, you are correct. It is a bug, something that doesn't work as it's supposed to. When multiple people edit one program, what must you exercise? So which of these four things? Version control, file system sourcing, Wi-Fi connectivity, or with 50 burpees? Who knows, 50 burpees could be a lot of fun, guys. Yeah, but this time we're looking for the answer version control. So that's what GitHub was for. GitHub was for to make sure that we were using latest versions of all files uh, within a repository or within a shared set of code. All right, next question. Which term describes buttons, sliders, or other parts of a GUI? So here's another question where we may, didn't quite get to activities dealing with this. We talked about it very, very, very briefly at the beginning of the marking period though. Other parts of a GUI. Think back to MIT App Inventor. We may have heard the word at that point. And the correct answer is widget. A widget is something that we use like a slider, like a button, things that the, a human would interact with on a graphical user interface. All right, next question. This term describes information about a file or set of information. Is it ID3 tag, beta data, metadata, or alpha data? So if you said metadata, that is correct. Think of it as information about a set of information. Metadata. Next question. Which is used for a tuple? So which of these would be, would initialize a tuple? Okay, so if you said parenthesis XYZ, that is correct. Uh, the brackets are all lists and you wouldn't initialize a tuple by using the word tuple. <laughs> all right, next question, five to go. What is steganography? Which of these best describes it? Is it using a spirograph, the science of a kind of dinosaur, masking your face or hiding information in something? This goes back to activity 143, maybe 144. There's a conclusion question about this. I hit the wrong button by accident. <laughs> Whoops, that's okay. It's yeah, hiding information in something. Uh, the buttons are not as big as I thought they were. <laughs> All right, so yeah, hiding information. So that's like, it's like hiding a message within an image, something that intelligence agencies try to analyze when they're, when they're uh, determining whether information is being transmitted secretly or in code. And we'll be talking about a few of those principles in the cybersecurity uh, unit that we'll be doing in the third marking period. Okay, next question. If name equals Jeffrey and a loop and a for loop iterates using name, how many types, how many times will it loop using the name that I have here, right? So how many times will it loop? So the name is Jeffrey, and a for loop iterates using name. How many times will it loop? If you said seven, that is correct. It's the amount of characters in the name. So if you plugged in your name instead, it would be however many characters are in your name. Remember something that iterates or is iterable, things like strings, lists, tuples. All right. Four or three, got three questions to go here. A function that calls itself, what do you consider that? Is it recursive, benign, dangerous, or Smeagol? Hit that thumbs up for a nice Lord of the Rings reference there, come on. Yeah, 
Yeah, so recursive would be that. So if a function kind of has a uh, area of it that can recall it, you could get into some dangerous areas when it comes to runtime errors. It's what's something called stack overflow, but sometimes functions do do, do that. All right, we got two questions to go. What info is stored in the API of a library of object-oriented code? So if we load up the random module or the numpy or the matplotlib, is it a list of objects in the library? Is it methods and attributes? Is it tutorials on use? Or is it objects and procedures? Yeah, it's methods and attributes. Methods and attributes would be included within that. Okay, we got one more question to go. Oh, look at that, Mr. C is back in the game. All right, an image is stored as B. It's 480 columns, 540 rows. If you type len B, what's the output? All right, that's a, that's a good one. Do you get one, do you get 480, do you get 1120, or do you get 540? You would get 540. The way that the image is stored, it stores the uh, the image as a as a wide list of of arrays, basically, and it's arrays within arrays. And then each of those other arrays also has other arrays in it. Uh, it gets very very uh, complex and, and tricky, but understand that 540 would basically be telling you the the uh, length of how many rows there is. If you did the length of one of those row arrays, it would actually be 480. And if you did the length of one of those 480 arrays, it would be three, but the activity 143 kind of walks through how that works. All right, and that's it. That's our Kahoot. So according to my cell phone, it says first place, this is learning. So hopefully you got a good score. Again, remember, comment, how many did you get right? Be honest, how many did you get right when you went through this, uh, this quiz? Okay, so now the last part of this video, I just want to kind of remind you of your study guide and what some of these words mean and a reminder of how the, uh, how the uh, midterm is going to look as far as what uh, is on there. So let's kind of go through each of these items. So you want to be comfortable with the following vocabulary words. Okay, so float. Remember, a float is a number that has any number of decimal places. So think of it as 5.5 .5 as an example of a float. Uh, if it's 5, then that's considered an integer. Uh, immutable means that you can't change it. So mutable means you can. So things that are immutable, things like a tuple, whereas something that's mutable is a list where you can add to or alter elements in a list. Uh, iterable, something is iterable, that means that it can be looped through. So examples of iterables include lists, tuples, and strings. Um, the range function is uh, something that generates a list that you can iterate through. So that's why sometimes you'll see the range function used in for, loop, for loops. Excuse me. A null string is an empty string. Think of it as a variable with zero characters in it. Uh, sometimes you'll start with a, a null string and a function and then build something as an example, the hangman function in 137. A string is a list of characters uh, as a variable type. A tuple is a list, but the list cannot be changed. Um, of course, I'm using the next word list. A list is a, a list of elements. Think of it as uh, a bracket. So like, for example, a tuple is with parentheses, whereas a list is whoops a list is a bracket list and also at the same time you can have different types of elements in a list as well so you could have floats you could have integers you could even have just to add to the confusion you can even have another list as one of the elements so yikes <laughs> all right a for loop runs a set number of times a while loop runs until a condition is met uh, kind of look back here just kind of look at this example null string like that iterable a list a tuple or a string that can be looped through a float is like for example 5.5 5.0 5.3 or even 5.0. Those are all examples of floats. Uh, elements that can't be changed, such as a tuple. Okay, so continuing. A working directory where Python is looking 
for files related to the current session. Okay, so think of it as that's when you initiate a log in the IPython window, it is stored in your working directory. Your working directory and your Python directory can be two separate folders. Uh, sometimes, for example, in the uh, objects and methods, when we store the Python file, you may be storing the Python file in a separate folder. You would be storing images and things you'd be working with with that code in that folder as well. API stands for Application Programming Interface. Okay. Sorry, not programming, program interface. <laughs> application program interface. Uh, think of it as the random module, the matplotlib, those are all examples of APIs. A bounding box is a region of an image uh, with the coordinates as vertices. Okay, you use a bounding box when you covered the earring uh, on the woman in activity 143. GUI stands for graphical user interface, like Windows or your phone. Those are all examples of GUIs. A handler is something that deals with uh, an interactive event, such as uh, what to do when the K key is pressed. That's an example of a handler. Okay, we use handlers in Scratch. Uh, we haven't talked too much about them in Python. But that's what that is. Instantiation is when a, when a variable is initialized sometimes as a member of a class. Steganography is hiding information within digital media. HCI, we talked about that. That's human computer interaction or interfacing. Okay, could be either of those. Okay, so those are your definitions. Those are the words that you kind of want to be comfortable with when it comes to the questions you'll be asked. Um, you will get the following bit of information, bits of information on the, on the test as well. Uh, you'll see 10 questions from your quarter two skills assessment. You'll see questions that are related to built-in functions in Python. You're going to get questions and then you'll write lines of IPython code that will produce specific output, but you also have questions where you'll examine code that is input into IPython and write what the output would be. There's also be a short answer question uh, where you'll analyze two strategies for the prisoner's dilemma and you'll determine what the final scores will be. The function will not include the random function, so you'll have a nice and easy way to determine um, which, what the strategies would be. And then of course some vocabulary related questions to what we just looked at on, the, on this. This also on the, um, <clears throat> about the uh, Kahoot that we just went through. There will be two performance tasks. Uh, I do want to say that you're going to choose, it says choose one to complete for the test. Uh, you can complete an additional task for insurance. So you'll have two choices. One, you'll write a program that will draw lottery numbers and check them against a user provided ticket. Very similar, but not quite the same as 137. So I want to just caution you that it is a little bit different, but if you understand how to write that function in 137, then you should be good for this performance task. And the second one, you're going to get an image and you're going to get a program. And all you have to do is edit the program to do a few different things, one of which uh, will be to zoom in on a specific area uh, using xlim and ylim. Uh, but there are three other small little tasks I will provide on the test uh, some of the other functions that you'll use to accomplish those edits. So there you have it. That's your midterm review. So if you have questions about the midterm, I know that you can contact me. I know that you know that you can contact me uh, by, by email. You can uh, but come see me in school on Monday or Tuesday if you have specific questions and want a kind of an in-person answer. And just a reminder, all your work's got to be in by Sunday at 9 o'clock. I hope you enjoy the snow day. Have a wonderful day, everybody.